Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on diagnostics for regression models. Just as a reminder, the simple linear regression model is that your data are normally distributed and independent. The mean is given by a linear function of an explanatory variable xi, and after we've accounted for that mean line, the observations have a constant variance. We can rewrite this model in this format, where we've now said that our data yi are equal to this linear combination of the or linear function of the explanatory variable xi plus an error where this error now is normally distributed again independent uh, with mean zero and a variance of sigma squared and we've commented previously that we can estimate these errors uh, by using what's called the residuals the residuals are just the response minus the that line given the explanatory variable but now we've plugged in the estimates of the parameters. All right, so the main uh, assumptions that go along with this model are that there's a linear relationship between the mean of the response and the explanatory variable, that the errors themselves are normally distributed, that they have constant variance, and that there's independence between the observations or independence between the errors, the residuals, the errors. So uh, we're going to basically go through these four assumptions uh, in, in a row and talk about how we can check that these assumptions are at least approximately met um, using graphical diagnostics. All right, so the first one is linearity. So here is uh, plots of the response versus the explanatory variable. So in this case, we just have um, four different plots. In each plot, we just have a... A hypothetical response on the y-axis and a hypothetical explanatory variable on the x-axis, we see that the first one looks pretty linear. That is, if we were to draw a line through these data points, that line would seem to capture what's going on in the data fairly well. A straight line would not do this data justice, nor would it do this data justice, and this data maybe. Right? So one of the things that we can do, or one of the common uh, tricks when you see um, response versus explanatory variables that don't look very linear is to think about taking logarithms. This is a common uh, technique for getting things to look more more linear than they would otherwise. So in fact uh, all of these data sets were constructed by um, essentially taking the anti-log or taking the exponential and so if we do take the log in the right form we get exactly the same data set back. So in this case we had to take the log of the response in this case, we had to take the log of the explanatory variable, and in this case, we had to take the log of both. All right, so uh, the easiest way to check for uh, linearity assumption in regression is to just plot the response versus the explanatory variable. If it doesn't look very linear, try some transformations. All right, so now that we've gotten linearity a bit out of the way, I wanted to comment that all of the rest of the diagnostic plots that we're going to look at uh, are equally valid for a NOVA model as they are for the regression model. All right, so linear is the only one that's special to regression. All right, so the second question was talking about normality, and I've commented before that the uh, best way to look at a norm, uh, normality is to look at what's called a QQ plot. The QQ plot basically plots the uh, actual residuals divided by their theoretical quantiles if normality were true. Before I go any farther, I want to comment that uh, these plots were generated by R. The plots that are generated by SAS uh, swap the x and the y axes. So uh, neither is necessarily correct. They both just uh, they just happen to do things differently. So in SAS, the y axis is going to be the theoretical quantiles, and the x axis is going to be the sample quantiles. All right. So these first two slides that I have have data that are purely normal. And when the data are normal, uh, they typically will follow this line. Right? This is the y equals x line. And so what we can see here a bit <clears throat> is that um, when you have not so many data points, things can look more not normal or more unnormal. Right? So these data points don't really fall right on the line, whereas as we increase the number of data points, they seem to fall more and more directly on the line. But even when we have lots of data, uh, at the ends we see some deviation here. But again, these data were exactly normal. 
So this is just the, the natural variability that you see amongst normal samples. All right, the next slide shows some more normal uh, plots. This is just uh, all with 100 data points and just simulating data uh, 10 times just to see what kind of variability we have with 100 data points around these QQ plots. And so you can see that sometimes you get things that look fairly not normal. Right? These points here at this, uh, this end of the spectrum uh, are deviating from the line. But again, these data are all normal. So when you see points that are just not away from the line, that doesn't necessarily indicate that the data aren't normal. All right, so the final slide I want to show is the slide where we have one sample that is, again, normal. And now we have four samples that are not normal. And now this is with 1,000 data points, so 1,000 residuals. All right, so we're going to be looking at a few different scenarios. The first one here is if the data are right skewed. This is the case where you would often want to take a logarithm. So if your residuals here are right skewed, what happens is that the uh, residuals tend to all be above the line. In this case, uh, when using R, if you're using SAS, it's going to be exactly the opposite. The data points sort of form a uh, upside down U shape below the line. Right, so that's right skewed, left skewed is exactly the opposite. And heavy tail uh, has features that look like right skewed on the right side, and it looks like left skewed on the left side. So again, what you're looking for when you're doing the QQ plots is uh, residuals that basically fall right along the line or close to it, and not these U-shape things for skewness and not this sort of inverted S shape here. And if you're looking in SAS, it would be actually an S shape. All right. So looking at these QQ plots takes some practice, um, but they are about our best judge uh, for looking at normality graphically. OK, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, constant variance. Now, I want to mention that the most common non-constant variance is when the variance increases with the mean or with the fitted value or the predicted value. We've actually seen one example of non-constant variance previously when we were looking at the Red Dive 40 data set. And this actually shows a bit of the opposite pattern. So here, the standard plot to do for looking at non-constant variance is to look at residuals versus the predicted or fitted values. And here what we see is it seems like maybe there's more variability on the left end of the x-axis here towards 65 than there is when the x-axis is 90. So although I said the most common non-constant variance is when the variance increases with the mean, in which case you would see a funnel shape where the small part of the funnel is on the left and the big part of the funnel is on the right, instead what we see here is a bit of the opposite, that there's a little bit of a bigger funnel size on the left end of the spectrum and then the small part of the funnel will be on the right side. All right, so this is the standard plot to look at when you're looking for non-constant variance, is taking the residuals versus the fitted values. Um, all right, that's non-constant variance. The next thing is uh, looking at independence. This independence uh, uh, talks about a lot of different possibilities. Or said another way, there's lots of different ways that the data could be not independent. Uh, we've mentioned a few of those things like a cluster effect or a serial correlation or a spatial association. Um, and basically, uh, when you're trying to look for a lack of independence and, and to see if your model isn't justified uh, because of this independence problem, you basically want to just do a bunch of plots. So make plots of residuals versus any possible explanatory variables that you have. All right, so uh, common ones to do would be to look at residuals versus the group, right? If you think that there's a cluster effect because of the grouping of your data, and you know that there are groups, you could uh, do that diagnostic plot. Uh, but frankly, if you know that there's grouping amongst your data, it's probably better just to do blocking, which we'll talk about uh, once we get to multiple regression and two-way ANOVA. All right. If you're looking for serial correlation and you happen to have the actual times the observations were made, then looking at a residual plot versus that time is great. Oftentimes we don't know the time, but sometimes we have an observation number, or said another way, the, uh, the row 
your data exists in, say, an Excel spreadsheet. And the reason that this is relevant is because oftentimes people who are creating the data sets uh, put the data into the spreadsheet in order that they were actually taken. And so as a proxy for time, you can use observation number. The final one is to look at uh, for the spatial association. If you have any explanatory variables that have to do with space, you can just plot residuals versus that spatial variable. Now, the key thing that you're looking for in all of these examples is to look at any pattern. Remember that the assumptions in the model are the data are independent. And so if you uh, were to make any of these plots, you should see absolutely no pattern if the assumptions are met. If you see some kind of pattern, then the, depending on what pattern exists, will tell you that there's a lack of independence in the model. All right, so we've seen, uh, I'm just going to show one example here. This was an example of this residuals versus spatial variable, because we've actually already seen this. Um, in the uh, potato scab experiment, this is an experiment where we had fall and spring application of um, some, uh, some, I guess it was pesticide, where uh, it was trying to control the amount of uh, disease on, in these potatoes. And the d experiment was set up on a 4 by 8 grid, that is 4 rows and 8 columns. And when we looked at the residuals versus the columns the, from a uh, one-way ANOVA fit, what we saw here is that there seems to be a pattern between the residuals and the column number. That is, we can see a pattern here that where it starts to low, it gets increasingly higher, and then it comes back down, suggesting that there's some kind of spatial effect that's going on uh, amongst these amongst these data. All right, so uh, the, in summary, basically, when you're looking for uh, diagnostic plots for your for your regression fits, you, one of the best ways to do it is to do a graphical exploration of your data. And the main point here is to graph it about as many ways as you could possibly think. Uh, at sort of a minimum, you should be thinking about making these plots. So looking at response versus explanatory variable values. And I guess I've duplicated that. All right, that's how, that's how important it is. Make sure you do it twice. And now it also comments that you might want to try some transformations on the response and the explanatory variables to look at uh, whether a, a uh, transformation would make model assumptions more valid. You should look at QQ plots of the residuals for sure. You should look at residuals versus fitted values versus your explanatory variable values versus observation number for this time, this serial correlation, uh, and versus any other variable that you have access to, even if that variable is not in the model. And the key here is that for most of these, especially the latter, what you're looking for is any pattern. If there's a pattern that you see there, and it's not just one point, but if the, the points overall show a pattern, then you should suspect that something is wrong with the assumptions in your model.